Okay, so I think I succeeded. Um, again, by way of introduction, I'm the senior engineer for uh, AWS SageMaker. Um, SageMaker is a product that we launched, is a suite of products that we launched uh, in 2017, if I remember correctly, late 2017. And uh, it's essentially AWS's uh, machine learning platform as a service for our customers. But it's more than that. And I'm going to maybe walk you through what it is that we do and, and uh, what our suite of products looks like. Machine learning is happening on AWS companies of every size and industry. Uh, you will see on this slide a number of companies that you're familiar with, companies that, that were you know, born out of technology and made technology a the center of what they do. But, and you know, you see Pinterest, you see uh, AI companies, build.com, Huddle, but there's also other companies who have nothing to do with technology uh, and, and organizations. MLB in the bottom left corner is an example of that. And those companies have now decided to jump into ML and they've decided to do so on AWS. ML, I mean, I'm not sure I, need, I don't need to tell you this, but ML is way past the hype cycle and it's here to stay. We have tens, hundreds of thousands of customers uh, for um, uh, machine learning on AWS. SageMaker has tens of, thousands, tens of thousands of these customers and we really innovate in a really rapid clip. Uh, last year alone, we launched 250 features on uh, SageMaker. Um, we, our customers are telling us that SageMaker is making the journey to machine learning easier and smoother. And, and I'm going to walk you through some of those things very briefly. Again, one more example of customers who do, um, who do machine learning as part of everything of, of the normal cycle of operations. Lyft in the middle, uh, their level five now spun off was, it does, um, uh, self-driving vehicles and there's a lot of science there's a lot of uh, intelligence and skill that goes into building models for self uh, self-driving cars they approached they approached us and they said hey we really want to use SageMaker and its distributed training uh, platform to run um to to train our computer vision models for self-driving cars and they use our uh, distributed libraries that we built and crafted and maintain and offer free of charge to SageMaker users to speed up their training significantly. Um, the Port of Vancouver uh, with Deloitte has built a computer vision system based on Panorama and Julian is going to talk about that in a second to uh, expedite container, container movement. They built an OCR system that reads uh, numbers of containers and they can detect where each container goes. Um, the NHS, uh, actually Atlassian is another example. Uh, Atlassian is a company that I think we're familiar with. They offer products like Jira and uh, Confluence and, and they used one of our fully managed services called Guru to detect the quality of the code and detect false spots in their code. These companies have really, really wide uh, differences in terms of industry, skill level. And, and our vision, which is very ambitious, I think, is to make machine learning accessible to, F, to all customers. From the developer to all the data scientists, people who live and breathe code, they understand Python, they understand machine learning, all to the researcher, all the way at this end to the business analyst. And our mission is to provide a suite of platform that can speak to the people who understand ML, Python, they understand what a, a convolutional neural network is to the business analyst who maybe understands Excel. And uh, they want to work with a familiar interface. And so we built an organization to do that. That's composed of engineers, people like me, scientists who advance the state of the art, UX researchers who actually are able to understand the intricacies of the um, relationship between user and product and scholars who spend 20 percent of the time with us to build new products 
So what will make ML accessible? And, and this is kind of our vision for the five pillars that will make ML pervasive and accessible to multiple companies in multiple domains, multiple personas with different levels of skills. I'm going to start with the purpose-built infrastructure. We at AWS have a long tradition in building long in building software stacks, but as of you know six or seven years ago, we've also started building our own city code. And so Inferentia, which does inference and training, which does training, are two purpose-built chips that we at AWS have invented and deployed. Uh, we our team, Bratin's team and our organization has worked very closely with the Silicon team and we've helped them design these chips and integrate them into our servers. Edge infrastructure. Uh, there is a lot of uh, machine learning that's happening in the cloud today, as Bratin says, 80, 90 percent. But the edge is about to explode, in my opinion. What to do with machine learning at the edge? We've made a lot of investment in that sense with uh, Panorama, and Julian is going to talk about that. SageMaker Edge Manager. We want to understand what it means to run ML in industrial settings and get that data, bring it back to the cloud, process it there, and create this feedback loop. Uh, Mon uh, Amazon Monitron is, is another one of our services that does that in a fully managed way. And also optimize the frameworks. We have a lot of tools that we have built that can really take advantage of the CDCO, of the AWS infrastructure. I'm going super fast because I, I really, uh, and you know, please uh, drop note, drop questions in the notes or let uh, our team know and we'll answer them after. Um, the other thing that's going to make them accessible is in innovations in the in the aspects of ML that are tangential to getting a result. Is this a dog? Is this a cat? Understanding why decisions were made, bias and explainability, making ML fairer and more explainable, more accessible to people who need to take the decisions and the consequences of the decisions of an ML model and live with them. I'm thinking about uh, uh, people who are you know models for the heavy impact on people's lives. We want to be able to explain why this decision maybe about a loan that impacted somebody else's life was taken. We also want to uh, you know, build tools that allow our customers to understand without them having to understand the, the specifics of how this was done, that there is an anomaly here. Um, look out for vision and monitoring two examples. And um, we're going to come to one of my favorite aspects, which I hope will resonate with you, ML pipelines and the industrialization of ML. And let's jump into that. Um, we have seen an explosion of ML on, uh, on SageMaker. Five years ago, we would run small models with 20 million parameters. Today, we are at 100 billion. We're going to go to a trillion soon. We need to understand how to make that work. Customers will tell us, hey, yes, I have one model that applies to everybody. Now they're telling us, hey, I have one model per customer. They have hundreds of thousands, millions of models. Data size has exploded. The number of predictions made on SageMaker has exploded to 15 billion a day. The number of data labeling tasks has grown from zero to a million a day. There is this need of industrializing ML and with, with data sets and complexity so high and stakes so high, it is super important that we bring some of the rigor of software development, for instance, into uh, ML. Uh, five years ago, models were handed over to uh, be put in production by saying, hey, here's a model, doesn't matter how, we're, how we obtained it, please put it into production. That situation is no longer acceptable. Our customers are telling us that their situation is no longer acceptable. We need to be able to build a system that allows us to deploy models in production with the same rigor that we use when we deploy software into production. We test it, lineage, traceability, explainability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is one of the things that are super interesting to us. And then the other area in which we want to expand is multimodal ML. Um, again, a few years ago, 
there will be a computer vision object detection model. Right now, our customers are telling us, hey, I want to be able to generate an image using ML from spoken word. And so there's a, there's a connection, there's a confluence of words and text and uh, images. And this is very, very clear, especially in the medical, in the medical fields, where you have data points that come from clinical notes, claims, doctor's observations, maybe spoken, maybe written, uh, tests like ECG and EEG, uh, X-rays, lab reports, and you want to bring all these things together to build something like a, 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 a medical model to predict whether uh, to detect uh, illnesses. That part is super hard, and we at uh, AWS are working with our customers not only to provide them an infrastructure, but to help them bring together all these tools all these data points and give them a way to not get bogged down in the infrastructure, in the need to parse complex uh, formats and bring it all together. But we want to make sure that our customers who have may have different levels of skills can focus on what they do best, which is understand the information and the meaning in the, the data points that they see for uh, medical and bring them to uh, create successful uh, successful systems. Not all customers have that skill. Not all customers have the level of flexibility. Some customers say, I really want to be able to give a problem to you, AWS. And so we have built a whole bunch of domain-specific ML systems in the medical field, in the code and study field, in the financial field, where we want to be able to take for instance, financial text and turn it into actionable insights. We have built that. We have built a toolkit that allows you to take SEC filings and turn them into financial uh, financial insights that you can use for uh, to better predict, for instance, the dependability of a company that you rely on. We, I would love to hear what areas, for instance, you think that we should look at. You know, we looked at medical, we looked at financial. What else is there? We have industrial. Uh, this is one of the things that maybe we could talk about in the open discussion later on. Uh, 